it's really striking when you come to, to, to think about it. For most of the decade before the pandemic, uh, rates were pinned at zero or even negative in the Eurozone. One big difference from the pre-pandemic period is yields are at attractive levels, both in absolute terms and relative to the prospects for even sticky uh, uh, inflation. Uh, and in the context of a, of a global economy that's held in uh, and a U.S. economy that, that's over-delivered in terms of uh, uh, resilience. We have to go back to comparisons well before the GFC to see the kind of yields uh, that we are seeing right now in, uh, in core markets. But on a going forward basis, we do expect to see some more differentiation. Uh, the U.S. being more resilient in terms of activity, maybe with somewhat stickier inflation. Uh, European economies slowing more, transmission mechanism for policy operating uh, differently. And those have consequences not just for rates markets, but also in credit and in currencies. And I, and I look at it, you know, just across the industry, uh, people left core bonds, uh, whether you're talking about U.S. focused strategies or global strategies, because coming out of the global financial crisis, yields got real low. And then to your point, Rich, uh, not only are yields attractive, you yeah. believe yields can be a good predictor of longer term fixed income returns. So you know, when we look at you know, value within good old fashioned core and core plus bond strategies, they look good versus cash and they look pretty good versus public equities on a risk adjusted basis. I think uh, you know, when, when investors think about core, they try to utilize it for you know, essentially a couple of reasons. You know, one is getting high quality yield uh, in, a, in a more kind of a, a, you know, volatility adjusted manner. And on that, on that measure, so you have a, essentially an environment where you're getting uh, you know, equity-like uh, return possibilities with a volatility that is one third or with one a fourth. fraction of the volatility, yeah. yeah. And then on the, I think the active part as well, right? And using the breadth of resources, using the opportunities that Rich also talked about, allows us to kind of take advantage of uh, or at least uh, focus on some of those non-US uh, opportunities as well in the US core context, again in a small size, not deviating from the true intent of the strategy, but helping utilize those to create excess return. Uh, in terms of the decision-making frameworks, uh, a lot of what we're doing is what we've been doing you know, at PIMCO for several decades. Uh, we have resources around the globe covering uh, every sector of that market. So in some sense, it's, it's really as simple as leveraging the great ideas uh, across the platform, consistent with our top-down uh, themes. But I think one thing I've noticed in my, my time here um, um, is how oftentimes what starts as a macro conversation naturally moves into a sectoral conversation. So it's not just top-line GDP, it's policies, Washington, uh, regulation of financial institutions creates sectoral winners and losers. And probably we're seeing more of that in the current U.S. macro environment than we've seen in a very long time. I think now we have a lot of tight interactions both within the team, looking at ideas that are relevant to the total return strategy itself. So I haven't been as excited in a long time to work with you on this strategy uh, and to take advantage of what looks like, again, not only an attractive world in terms of starting yields, but that type of volatility across markets that typically is consistent with pretty good alpha generation as well. Yeah, working with Dan over the last 18 months has been incredibly kind of rewarding uh, as well. Uh, you know, Dan brings a unique perspective with having run income for over uh, 15 years. You know, to join the, uh, the core team, core is in the firm's DNA and it's uh, um, a strategy that's critically important to us and it's critically important to us because it's critically important to our clients. And then as you also alluded to, the value proposition has increased immensely uh, given the backup in yields, given the yields that we are currently seeing that we have not seen uh, in well over uh, you know, 17, 18 years. So the value proposition plus the excitement around the team uh, is, is, you know, is something that I'm quite, quite excited about on a go forward basis.